going to present this. Okay, we will be talking about uh, the GitOps use case um, reporting two and a half months after the campaign is launched. Um, feel free to stop me like at every slide you have a question because there's a lot to, to go through. We might forget the questions later. Um, so starting by a brief overview of, uh, of the campaign, this was, you all know you're uh, you've worked uh, on this campaign, but uh, main uh, main objectives were awareness and claim the ownership, or like build our own um, def definition of GitOps in the market. Uh, but in reality, we actually had really good results on SAOs and uh, and QL to SAOs, so that was um, a surprising and great thing to see. Um, so that's just the summary of like everything that was going on with the campaign and uh, key takeaways that we will go through each one uh, on the next slides and some uh, recommendations and next steps. But the, the main theme is that um, we, so the main objective was the awareness and the ownership. We, we, we did a lot of good things there. Uh, but we, we had lower inquiries than we would hoped uh, for, but good awareness levels with like some channels. Uh, but we had really good results uh, with uh, MQLs turning to sales opportunities and some uh, recommendations is that uh, it may be about time to refresh our content. And the good thing is that we do have some fresh content um, to add to our um, promotions. And there are some initiatives as well across the board for campaigns to get those um, uh, conversions um, quicker or to get to a higher level. So going to, okay, next slide. This is a campaign um, summary of how it performed. Um, the red, green, yellow, it means the red is below SAS average and yellow uh, medium and then green very good uh, but actually we, 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 we did have a lower uh, inquiry to MQL so not many of our inquiries uh, converted to MQLs but then the MQL to SAO it's red but it's actually the best across um, our use case campaign so our GitLab average is 1.8% and we have an aim, like an OKR for, uh, for this quarter to bring all the campaigns closer to that 5%. So uh, 4.7, it's red, but it's actually really good compared to other campaigns. And then SAO to, to close is green and good. Uh, it means the, it's a good quality leads that they are keen to move uh, forward uh, with the, the conversion. Yeah, Irini, do you, yeah. um... Do you, do you or anyone on the call have any kind of uh, ideas or thoughts around why the, the MQL to SAO conversion across all of GitLab campaigns is so low? But like, like our average is 1.8 compared to the, uh, and I realize like the industry averages is like across all of SAS, mm -hmm. but I was just curious if anybody um, knew if it's a maybe a, uh, this would seem to say that we have way, way, way more MQLs than we can deal with and we're only accepting the cream of the crop or that all of our MQLs are, are horrible and we're chucking wood or we're, we're sending a lot of bad MQLs and sales is only accepting a little tiny portion of them. So uh, William, it's Tina. Uh, Donk and his team are, are currently analyzing this and we're looking to solve for this. I think for Q3, we're looking to get, um, I'm pretty sure the MQL to SAO target is we're looking to get it closer to three or 4% in this quarter. Um, but we know that something is broken. I don't know if they know exactly what is broken, um, but a lot of it is potentially skewed too because uh, the way that we were actually scoring our MQLs, we were auto MQLing for every GitLab 30 day free trial. Uh, which is, is, you know, not a complete practice that you would see in the SaaS market. So um, they've made a few tweaks to how we score. 
um, and then it kind of will go from there. Um, so we know that it's an issue. Um, I also believe that this particular, and you know, you have to be very conscious of this. And I don't know, Irene, if you talked about this, some of these numbers are slightly skewed because of very large deals that closed. I think it was UBS is in this mix. So you'll see some of this, um, you know, how it says like SAO to close is at 33%. Um, you know, that is, some of the numbers are, are slightly off, if you will. That's all I know about um, the MQL to SAO. I know that's definitely something that we're working on fixing this quarter and the next. Uh, I don't know, Matt, if you have more, I see you're on here, if you have more details. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a few things here that we're working on, William, um, that one is, one of the assumptions is, is targeting. Um, that the question that Tina kind of brought up is, are all the MQLs that we're bringing in the quality MQLs that we, we want? Um, and we won't know that until we figure out the, how the SDRs are working through the MQLs that come through. Um, there's a little bit of emotion where we're trying to align a trial with like education materials, like a webcast plus a trial um, that if those two things are together and SDR is more likely to work that because that shows a like high engagement interest as far as like sales process. Whereas if somebody just watches a webcast, that's, I guess that doesn't trigger as like something that, sh I won't say that they wouldn't go after it, but it's higher likelihood if they had like a trial along with it, then um, an SDR would work that deal a little better. So we're trying to work with the SDRs a little bit more to understand how they're working MQLs as they're coming through the queue. Um, and then trying to figure out the right type of content to deliver to that person. So maybe we're testing right now trial, but maybe that's not the right answer. Like um, we're going to try to figure out, do they need another webcast or do they another, need a piece of uh, content before they get, um, they can get to the SEO, SAO process. Um, and so we're trying to figure that out. I think across the board, we're we're below the industry line, um, but we're doing things to try to uh, improve that. Cool. Yeah, I didn't want to derail too much off onto kind of general um, general performance, so we can dig into the GitOps performance. But uh, but that's really helpful. And if uh, Tina or Matt or anybody, if you have a link to any of those other initiatives, like it, it sounds like you know. This is not a surprise. We know this, and we're digging into it. If there's like an issue or or somewhere that we can just kind of link in the notes here, then I think we can dig into that more general thread later and kind of continue with the campaign specific. There is a link here to the free trial remarketing initiative on the recommendations. And one more thing about the targeting that Matt mentioned is that a hypothesis for this campaign performing better uh, for MQL to SAO is that there was a lot of technical webcasts and partner webcasts. So um, from the analysis, uh, we figured out that the individual con contributor maybe may need higher scoring in our scoring system. So this type of, um, of webcast may have been more targeted into those personas that can convert it better than other, uh, other initiatives and other campaigns that may uh, have been more wide targeted. That's a hypothesis that could also be part of it. Yeah, and I'll link um, maybe in the issue, um, we're trying to lean towards more, instead of general display advertising, um, doing more focused websites where we're showing um, our ads. So um, one example is our sponsorships are changing. One of those sponsorships is a, um, a publisher called DZone. Um, and within that package that we're signing up for, we're actually being involved, um, sponsoring a GitOps plus Kubernetes um, report that they're doing. So hoping that uh, that test will um, pan out for um, this GitOps campaign. But I can link the, uh, the I guess it's an epic, um, the epic of all the publishers that we're working with. Um, okay, so moving on. 
Um, looking at the um, channel performance, uh, we're seeing that email and paid social uh, were the, uh, the channels that performed best uh, for this campaign. Um, nothing surprising. I think um, email for this particular one is because we had all these partner web webcasts that uh, some of them were promoted primarily by emailing our database. Um, so, uh, and that performed really well. They, they had great results. So email is up there. Um, and that's an insight so that we actually have people, we had people in our database that were, um, had an appetite for this type of content or theme. Um, and, um, and just by emailing them, we, we, we could actually reach them. Um, one thing I would add there, if you just yeah. go back one slide, Irene, um, I just want to caveat there that this one's, at least from the paid side, um, is a self-fulfilling pro prophecy because um, we know that Facebook is better from all the channels that we run of promoting events. So we push the majority of the budget towards Facebook to promote the, both the webcast. So take that with a grain of salt when we look at this data is that the performance we're seeing here is because we pushed the majority of the traffic through Facebook to promote the two webcasts for GitOps. Okay. Um, uh, looking at the content that were performed, so we, we were expecting um, that the panel this discussion, it was our primary landing page. So most of our bank budget was directed towards that page uh, on paid and then the HashiCorp uh, webcast as well. So that was something we would expect, we were expecting to, to see it as the top performing um, content. But it, uh, an interesting thing to see is that there was a, a hands-on virtual lab uh, with Terraform, um, uh, at the Quick Labs uh, virtual lab that actually, uh, it was one of those uh, webcasts that we only sent one email to our database. It was oversubscribed and it was the third best performing asset with no uh, paid promotions behind it. Uh, and it brought like uh, really great results. Um, so maybe it's um, type of content that we would uh, con con consider rep replicating or doing with other partners as well. So that one, uh, William, just for your edification, there's a couple of things more to note on that, Irene, mm -hmm. is normally people have to pay for Quick Labs access with Google uh, and Google offered it for free. So that could have been the appetite on why we, we got so many people in the MQL. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Um, we don't have any other <laughs> GitOps hands-on workshops outside of those um, right now that have been already built. Um, we're working on one right now with AWS, William, that will be uh, somewhat GitOps focused. It'll also include, include Gremlin uh, in that workshop. Um, and then that would be something that we could replicate in region where each of the kind of field marketing managers could uh, take that and run that in a regional, more targeted area. But uh, the Google one, again, it, it is, you're almost dealing with like three companies because you have Google and then you have their, their arm of Quick Labs, which they now own. Quick Labs typically is for fee. Um, and uh, that could be why that this particular one did so well. Yeah, we can compare uh, with the ROI and how much you pay to get that access to Quick Labs and if it's worth it. It was free. Uh, Everything was free because we negotiated it with Google and Quick Labs. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, if, uh, if, it, if it's worth in terms of, okay, so they, they gave us the access we didn't uh, pay to have yes. the access. That's correct. Yeah. It was a difficult one to run in terms of logistics, like it was a mess at the time, uh, but it, it looks like people got value out of it. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's just, um, we could we could figure out how much it would have cost us if you want to do that. We mm -hmm. could, see that. but again, this is one of those things that in partner marketing that we get a lot of times for free that, you know, I'm not sure how much Google would be able to consume if we replicated that, right? So, 
we just have to keep that in mind. Yeah. Hey, Irene, looking at this and some of the uh, commentary that you shared via Slack, do you think we should be readjusting some of what we're doing um, with the content based off of aligning to the segments in the customer journey? Um, mainly because I remember there's a Slack message where you said you wanted to start testing the eBooks, which is more mm. top funnel type of content. Um, and then utilizing these webcasts as more of mid funnel, bottom funnel type of um, engagements with nurture or remarketing. Um, yeah. So there's more about uh, the eBooks late, later on, but so the two eBooks we have, uh, is one is top funnel, as you said, it's like a beginner's guide to GitOps. But the second one is more uh, is more technical or like uh, it may not be like top of funnel. Um, mm -hmm. I would be keen to try because we didn't have any other type of content for this campaign, only webcasts. So, and then uh, as we will see la later that the beginner's guide to the GitOps is only live two weeks with no promotion. And it's like one of the top of performing assets on Path Factory. So people are actually interested in it. Uh, and there is a big drop uh, of uh, traffic and MQLs and inquiries uh, for the GitOps campaign in general in August. Uh, and uh, yeah, in August, which may, may be seasonal, but still like it looks like um, we may need to refresh our content and we do have these two eBooks. So we definitely add it to, to the mix. Uh, we just need to figure out like how and it would run together with the uh, webcast as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> the entire website dropped uh, traffic in, in August, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, What's, well, um, that's a good point because I think when we initially spoke for this campaign, we're talking about building awareness around um, the GitOps term and Git, GitLab owning it. Um, however, we, I don't think we, when we out the bat, we didn't have the gated assets to kind of tie to that top funnel uh, aspect. And so I think that beginner's guide to GitOps would be really helpful in driving that awareness um, and getting people starting, starting to get people through the funnel. Mm -hmm. And then reusing some of this, uh, some of these webcasts for later down in the nurture. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, yeah, one thing in general, I think, is that we, we made a choice to start this campaign knowing that we had little to no content. And so in a lot of ways, the success of the campaign is really, um, in my mind, exciting because I, I think it speaks to the value of MVC nature of GitLab. Where if you would have said, hey, should we run a GitOps campaign? I would have been like, no way. We need to take a quarter, build our content, you know, run that later, do like a typical business plan of, you know, nine months like some other company. But at GitLab, we're like, no, no, no. We're just take what we have now. We're going to run with it. And we did a ton with a little, with a very, very little. So, um, so that's exciting. One question I have about awareness is do we have any metrics? I didn't notice, and maybe I just missed them, but metrics on... Um, organic social and organic, uh, you know, search engine optimization or organic ranking. And so, uh, for example, like with one of the goals to be like to establish, establish ourselves with this term, um, those were, those, those, like, I wouldn't expect, you know, us to get a, a, a bunch of IACV, which we did. And that's amazing. I'm like really excited about that. But, um, you know, the, it's late, it's later, it's later in the, um, William, that ISCV is off because of that UBS deal. That's why it's so large. That, that, that's a good call. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder if we, is it, do you know, Tina, is, is anybody else like excluding that deal just because it's such a, I don't know. And, you know, actually, that's a good question. I was thinking about that as I was looking at this stuff. I'm like, I, I don't even know how much that deal is in that number. Um, it would be interesting. I mean, again, it was a very large deal for us. So obviously it's in there, but 
um, it's not 100% accurate to say that we would get that IACV time and time again um, because of the, the sheer nature of that deal. Uh, but I think it's fair as a follow-up um, item if we could find out uh, what the value of that is so we would be able to kind of, at least in our minds, understand with and without UBS. But also what two, two things to note is that the attribution is linear, so we get a percentage of that via the campaign, so it's not the whole deal. We just get one touch point. And also the, uh, that MQL to SAO was high across the months, not one month that that deal was signed. So it may be skewing, but not like that's the only thing. Yeah, the, con the conversion rates on this campaign were really well uh, mm -hmm. across, across everything. So that deal would, I could see that deal skewing like final IACV. Um, but also to Irene's point, if it's linear attribution, I would expect a huge years long across everything deal like, like a USB to, to touch almost every campaign we have to have touch points and to have that, that big chunk of IACV uh, essentially diluted across all of the campaigns. Whereas if you compare the GitOps campaign to the other use case campaigns, it's, it's the highest performing by far. Um, so there's, we either got more touch points in the US, USB, you know, we had like, this, for some crazy reason, they watched every single webcast we have, like right before the deal closed or, um, all that's to say is uh, we had great, you know, um, what's, the, what's the last one? Closed one. We had great closed one uh, percentage conversion. And that's kind of, that's exciting. And that would speak to like across a lot of whatever the touch points were, not just one deal. And then it looks like we do have some organic keyword performance. Um, we can jump to that, like to quickly comment on uh, those slides. If you, uh, Niall, if you will have any insights into that, like how did we perform with search? And then there is organic social as well in the next slide. Yeah, so uh, in relation to the keyword terms, um, we, we looked into it following it. We have, uh, we're currently ranking for about five terms, but they're on two specific pages, which is the topics page. And there is a blog article that's been live that we, we put the link into to include into a funnel system. That's been live, I think, for about six or seven months. Uh, so there's a slight competition between the, the actual term GitOps, which is between the topics page and the blog. So that's position 12 and 13. Um, so I think we, we were talking about which one to optimize for the, to the primary term for that. Uh, and then the other terms that they're ranking for, which is what is GitOps, GitOps which is your top of the funnel term, is also the topics page. Um, and then the uh, webcast is actually in position 20, which is the GitOps GitLab AWS, and that's for AWS GitOps. And then GitOps workflow is the uh, blog article also. So um, there is a bit of traction there going with the keywords, but as you're saying, a lot of it is fairly is fairly fresh. Obviously we're getting bigger traction with the, the blog article because it's just most likely been live longer. Mm. And, and there is a trend, uh, I think that's on the paid social slide that GitOps, uh, well, let me find it. The GitOps term, a keyword is like top, and then the next keyword is GitOps Kubernetes. And uh, yeah, it's here. And if we actually could target like a new, the, the ebook, it's called like GitOps with Co Co uh, Co Kubernetes and GitLab. So we could actually use that, those keywords uh, driving to that asset. Uh, that might help as well with those rankings. Um, sorry, going back to, if we want to, uh, we, we, uh, we can I, cover the social. Yeah. Can I just add, add a little bit yeah. to that? So just yeah. clarity there, we can't, paid search doesn't have any um, any implications towards ranking. So I just want to be careful yeah. how how we word that of putting more paid does not help like improve um, organic ranking. It can help improving for organic traffic because you own more of the space, um, but it doesn't help with ranking. So I just want to make sure that we understand that clarity. Yeah. Okay, so I can actually hop in to cover the organic social. Um, so I did link also at the very top of my notes. So once you all are 
kind of going through the whole deck, I have a separate issue open for organic social results that dives deeper into the takeaways that I'm about to present. Um, so feel free to go in there. But the main takeaway from this campaign from an organic social perspective is that by strategically contributing to the GitOps conversation, by promoting the awareness content and with purpose enabling our partners and our speakers, we were actually able to gain a stake in the GitOps conversation. And I'm able to say that because I had built out that social listening report in Sprout um, and I compared, you know, the few, the three months of this campaign to the previous three months. Um, and that really was focusing on a conversation of GitLab plus GitOps. So tracking any mentions that people are having those type of conversations, if it includes those two words is really like the main focus of, of my data. Um, but basically in the issue, it's, it's not, it, it's not explicitly said here, but if you open up my issue later on, you'll actually see that while we've works lost ground in the GitOps conversation, GitLab gained it and they gained it in both terms of engagements and volume. So you're able to say and assume that based off of us strategically joining this conversation and sharing content and enabling our partners and like really contributing to the hashtag get ups and get ups conversation. We were able, someone who was like in really at like first place before the campaign, they ended up being behind us in number of engagements and just sheer volume. So, okay, so I, I got this, this is great. But are, why are we, I, I, I think we to share a voice by our partners losing voice feels an awful lot like we're not thinking of this correctly. Because we should be expanding this story of GitOps. After all, we are GitLab. Shouldn't we be focused on expanding the, vo the volume of discussions around GitOps holistically? I mean, I, I understand that that's one measurement. I just feel like that's like saying the pie, we shifted around the pie, but like WeaveWorks doesn't need to lose for us to win. Right. Um, no, but I would just say in the metric of so the the way social listening works is it's, it's just looking at number of posts and mentions and the way that I set up like keyword searches and just to show the success of us actually starting to talk about that conversation. You're able to see that the previous three months we weren't we weren't even listed like we weren't even coming up sure. on that list. So by us actually talking about it and creating more content around it, those who are in the actually top of the list, they're going to start shifting down because we're, we're now contributing to that conversation. So I wouldn't say that it's a negative thing. It's just, we, we weren't really talking about it at all. So we were obviously not found in that conversation. Um, so just by making sure that we have content and we're talking about it on social, that rank is obviously going to, to shift. It, sure. This I, is, just, uh, I think the way we'd like to measure that if we can, and I know if it's possible, is like ideally this, the, the pie of discussion, the number of discussions around GitOps should grow. And if we do our job right, we measure that on the number of like the number of times that we end up in the same conversation with WeaveWorks with, we didn't, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be bull in China shop here, but like we're struggling talking to ops and we have decided to launch GitOps as if we can reach ops on our own. Like, I feel like we're doing this backwards, right? We have a huge chunk of partners that want to talk GitOps. We'll talk GitOps with GitLab every time and twice on Sunday. And we did, you know, one launch with a couple of the partners and we did one session when I just say like, this should be reversed. We should be doing something with Pulumi, with Chef, with Puppet. Like they're the ones that have the ops audience that we want. We're not going to get the ops audience on our own. We need to co-op the, the GitOps story by going to everyone that is going to use GitLab in a GitOps space. And we, we, did, do a, we did do a Plumy webinar on GitOps. I don't, I think it might have, I don't know if it was included in the Plumy GitOps. did it. It was. I mean, it's it was. good. I, I, it was included. Not, it, it was, was included. Not. Yeah. So I would it just is. jump in here again. Um, Sorry, but from this is this is specific organic social and you know like we only have two tools that we can report on. We can obviously like shift the way we present the results, but from the beginning, 
it was very clear that, and yes, they were partners, but they were completely owning the conversation and no one else was able to be found. So for us to able to now be found is definitely our organic social win. Um, and as I go through the results a little bit deeper, the reason why this organic social campaign was even a success is because of the partners. I created like these social toolkits that provided every participating partner so social posts and, and images and videos that they could literally copy and paste. So the reason why we are showing up in the conversation is to due to the success of enablement and just providing easy copy and paste tools to the speakers and participating partners and also tagging them. Like them talking about us is the reason why we could expand our reach through organic social channels. Yeah, um, yeah. I should yeah, be clear. curious, can we measure well, the thing that Brandon's asking for? So, so for example, the fact that we were not even in the conversation and now you said we're at the top? In terms of engagements and sheer like, not like number of posts, like volume. Um, the reason why I'm able to say we're at the top is because what engaged most and what had like the most volume was our technical evangelists and then GitLab was after that. Um, they, actually, Irene, if you could just scroll up to my notes section of this first slide and we can actually open the social listening report because I have it linked in an issue. Yeah. Yes, so now if you scroll down a little bit to, conver ooh, wait, a little bit up, I have conversation contributors uh, listed mm -hmm. And this list, I've actually listed it in terms of these are the most engaged with contributors to the conversation. Like they in total, their posts in total had the most engagements around this conversation. Um, and so obviously you see like our technical evangelists and our partners. Um, there's also this YouTube video that just it's, it's gaining so much traction, so much traction on YouTube. I did have to call it out because it, it, it's sheer volume in comparison to anything else. So, I mean, honestly, YouTube could be a con some channel that we should consider. Um, but yeah, so I list here in order. These? Yeah, these are great. Can we put names? So like, I know obviously rancher is rancher, but I wouldn't know like. Yes. If we do that though, I would definitely, is, is this. Like C D A V I S A F C. I don't know who that is. Yeah, so I can do that, but I just have to make sure that it's con it's a confidential issue because I mean I'm these just are trying to get a sense of where real people. Are. If yeah. the number one is Rancher Labs, let's just note we did nothing on GitHub with Rancher Labs. We right. could have got mass like literally they will do anything we want, but we didn't do anything with them. They right? actually shared if you go to they shared ours. I'm saying we didn't do a yes. blog post with them. We didn't do a webinar with them. We didn't do any like the joint content. Uh, my team obviously reaches out and like, hey, we tell the story. So uh, I think what I'm trying to say is I think we're, we're building this incorrectly. Like, I think this is great. So let me just say like, hey, team, great, awesome. So let me just pause and say, awesome, now what? And I think we see this with security and we see it here. I see two places that we need to reach an audience that we're not, that we are not impl implicitly embedded in it, that we have partners that are. And so like GitOps, should we should flip it on the heads that says you're, if you're ops, what tool do you use? We're like I use, you know, today I'm on with ServiceNow and they're Puppet, right? They got Puppet Enterprise. We didn't touch Puppet Enterprise. And you know what they're doing? Puppet Enterprise with GitLab for GitOps. Like we have, we could hammer through all of these and make this front and center that this is the place you come to understand GitOps with whatever tool you are an ops team are using, right? And we have these pieces sort of hanging around in, in, but that ensures that the entire conversation is around GitLab, right? And that part we're not doing because we're, you know, we haven't created a central place for, for GitOps that other partners are all hitched onto, right? Um, so I think we made some good progress, but all of this was sort of in, you know, it was a sec. It felt felt like a secondary thought that we had partners. It was like, oh, we should have partners, and we uh, everyone agree. I, I disagree. I, I, I think agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, was I actually, feel like the whole success of the yeah. campaign was the fact that we shined a light on our partners and we provided them the tools that they needed in order to also contribute to the conversation. And by enabling their contributions, we grew 
the alignment and association of GitLab and GitOps. And that was through the uh, content, organic social, um, and various other activities. Every, you can also every see in the keywords place. to that rank, it's GitLab Terraform or GitLab, like other keywords that rank to or, or top performing posts are from partners. Right. I think we made good progress. I, I guess maybe what I'm saying is I still think we're just touching the surface of what this could be. So I think, I think I got off on the wrong foot with one statement and I just would love to backtrack to that to, to quantify it, which was there was an assertion that we gained ground and we lost ground. And I'm curious if that's actually true because I'll, I'll tell you what I think happened. What I think oh. happened is we were not even in the conversation at all and WeWorks was ranked number one. And then all of a sudden we ran this campaign and because of Myox's work and because, because of your whole team's work. And, and uh, we had this one session where I think it was you and me and Irene and we met with your whole team and we said, hey, let's, let's go ham at this. And I, I personally haven't seen another campaign at GitLab involve partners this much. So yeah. I would totally say the partners made this Correct. campaign. I think we did good. I just, what I want to say is like we hit, we hit more or less WeWorks and a little Terraform. We had a side one with Plumi, but we have another, when you talk about trying to reach this audience and I get, if we're, if we're done with running, you know, GitOps, that's fine. But if we want to keep moving on GitOps, I think we need to keep iterating on this and saying, how do we put all, how do we layer in Plumi and V Realize and Chef and Puppet and Salt and like there's- We, we, need, to, we need to keep going, but I guess what I'm saying is in a ranking, only one person could be number one. In order yeah. for somebody else to go number one, somebody else has to drop down. That yeah, like I wouldn't be mean, stuck on that. Yeah, that doesn't mean that the overall traffic didn't grow. And that's what I'm curious, Agreed. Kristen, if there's any way to say, this was the GitOps volume prior to our campaign. This was the GitOps volume can, yeah. after, yeah. I, I can do that. Um, What's the pie can, thing? If we can grow the pie, yeah. that'd be awesome. So what we want to do, like, for example, the way I'd represent this, we talked to WeWorks is, hey, WeWorks, we work to you and the pie that you, the number of people you reach through your GitOps number, like uh, who, for them, that number, as long as that number is growing, we win, they win, we all win, right? And I'd like, like that story would be the story if we tell this well, I think that's the story you want to do is we're taking GitOps and continue to expand it as we pull in other partners and every partner wins by being attached to the GitOps GitLab story. If we can yeah, tell so that, I, if that's true, that'd be awesome. I can be less specific, I guess. I say less specific because obviously I was focused on making sure that GitLab was associated with GitOps. So I can take it in a, like another we're gonna step back at a slide like before we show these results and basically say like this is what the Git GitOps conversation was and then yep. here's what it was after we joined it. Um, yep. These results I would definitely keep in mind that you know like the goal of this campaign and, and what we're doing on Grand Social was you know, like we're trying to create an association of GitLab and GitOps. So obviously yep. those are the mentions that I was definitely focusing on. So um, yeah, so yeah, I could I could take a step back. Kristen, I would say, I don't know, I'll, I'll reiterate it, which is we don't do GitOps without a partner. <laughs> so to, to, to have that last statement, because I was, I was actually taken aback on the key findings as well, because I'm like, okay, well, that's great that, you know, I, I, was, I was taken aback by that because it feels like it, it, we, we're approaching it like we would with a Jenkins um, in a bit bucket as opposed to a, a, a a, a more we don't have get ops if if we don't partner with these folks i don't think that we, was the message though that was portrayed again like this one this this metric this type of social listening like report it's ranking and and to william's yeah, point no, was someone has to be in one someone has to be in two someone has yeah. to be in three and if you're talking about it more because you have a campaign going those numbers are going to shift mm -hmm. um but i would say all of our content and anything going out from honestly like GitLab Social was most likely tagging partners because I mean we were doing a panel with partners and so we made sure to tag our speakers we made sure to tag others accounts and we provided posts to our partners so that they could also talk about it. And we wanted to be to be part of the GitOps conversation and actually the partners were the vehicle like we had no content and 
all the assets of content we have so far are partner related content. Like we have zero other content in this campaign. Yep. So I wouldn't say like we didn't, there's definitely, there may be a lot more to utilize there, but like we've already, uh, all the, the content we have is partner related. Um, and it's not just one or two, like uh, there are sponsored webcasts as well that are attributed to the campaign, like Pulumi and it was a hell cloud, I think. And uh, there was an Anthos uh, Google webcast as well. It's not just the panel discussion. They're all attributed mm -hmm. to this campaign. And there's definitely, I'm sure there's hundred more we can do. Uh, so let's just put the ideas down and see uh, what we can do like to get the, the campaign further and, and, um, and put more par partners with us in the discussion. Um. Yes. If, so can I validate if, are we wanting to continue down this path? Is it, is GitOps a use case we want to keep that we're going to keep moving just so I have. So there's, um, so with the new marketing plan, uh, it looks like, uh, the GitOps is, is a campaign that we would use to expand accounts rather than, uh, for demand gen. So it may be that, uh, the, the assets that we create are more towards that goal rather than create new MQL. So it's still like under consideration about how the, the use cases will, will sit with the new segmentation planning. Uh, so we're now lo uh, lo looking at what use cases work better for what segments and, uh, and in what buyer journey, uh, what, so, um, yeah. So I think we, we need to, we need to go up a little bit with some of these results because mm. yeah, these, we'll jump. <laughs> these well, no, no, no. I mean, like up, up to like the the directors and Todd and like oh, okay. up, up to leadership because so so one is the, in my mind this campaign seems wildly successful. We went from like not on the board to like massive you know social promotion. Um, or lots of organic, great organic ranking from like nothing to like pretty decent and a great place to go. And we even drove some revenue. I mean, this seems really, really successful. And then anecdotally, not out of data, but maybe we needed the data to find out, is it a land or is it expand? Because I, I know one of the drivers for this campaign was folks like Hayden saying, you know what, we land a lot of accounts in GitOps. This has historically been a GitLab thing where it lands in the ops and they're doing infrastructure as code. And that's a land use case. You should, you all should really should do a campaign on that. And so we said, okay, Hey, we'll run with the campaign. Even though we don't have the content, we'll run with the campaign. And as I understand it, the impetus for that was because anecdotally from the field, they were saying this is a successful land campaign. So I don't know if that's something for this group or maybe um, I can think about it and try to figure out who to partner with to maybe look at the, um, the Salesforce data. And say, is GitOps a land or is it an expand? I agree with you because I'm not sure who made yeah. that decision. I know that from a partner marketing and a partner alliances standpoint, we were not asked that question. <laughs> so I'm unsure and unclear how that came to that determination. And yeah. I just want to highlight for everyone, <laughs> the content we look at, which is great. Maybe why I'm being a little more defensive. So I apologize. Let me come off <laughs> defensive. Um, my team can't keep up with creating content by ourselves for campaigns like this one without some resourcing. So, you know, we got a whole bunch of other stuff, but I, I don't have any way of doing this at scale. So if it's something looks like it's successful, which is great. Uh, I think we can say, Hey, you know, as, as you all decide where you want to go, the content, I mean, the Hella cloud, the Anthos, the Pulumi, you know, um, William, you were awesome. Thank you for, you know, leading the discussion, putting together the one for the webinar, uh, the, which I think was great, the panel. Um, but like this other content, which believe, I, I think has massive value. I just want everyone to be conscious of the fact if we want to put good content behind this, we're, um, I'm, I'm my, my team's doing 70 hours a week right now. I can't do any more of it. So you're not going to, I, 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 we, we should do it. I think we should do it, but I want to just be clear if we say that, and I should say this ahead of time, like, great. V realize is great. 
chef is awesome. Puppet's got a story. Salt could do work. Like we got a bunch there, but I, I'm not, we could do it, but I have no one on my team that can do it today. Just let's, uh, let's, let's sink out of band, Brandon, because okay. one of the things I wonder is I, I'm super happy that you're like, you have, you have a powerhouse team that can go and do a lot of things. Uh, but we have a ton, we have a lot of GitOps SMEs in the org. Yeah. And if, if something that we just need to do is like, you know, someone on your team has the relationship, like Vic has the relationship and he's just going to be a connector and we're going to connect to like another GitLab SME to That'd be, be awesome. like the content generator. Um, that's when we can, we can scale this. I don't think we need to have that conversation now, but let's, let's sync off. Thank you. Appreciate. Yes. We'll sync offline. That'd be awesome. Thank you. All right. I'll move on because we're short of time now. Let's see what else we can cover. Um, so I'll, I'll go quickly through, through this, uh, just looking at the key findings. So uh, again, um, look, look, looking at the May uh, as a month uh, with zero cost, cost and a uh, big number of form fills. That's primarily, uh, uh, exclusively actually due to that uh, virtual lab uh, with, uh, with Terraform. So uh, that, that, that shows really good results there. And that we have that big drop in August, which, um, which, which we talked about. Um, um, hey, on, on that previous slide, yeah. just want to make sure like that gap is the result of some additional budget that needed to be spent at the end of the quarter mm -hmm. in July. And so I just don't want alarms to be set off that we're spending incredibly less. It was, it was the fact that there were some teams that did have budget that we needed to push somewhere in the last two weeks of the quarter to spend. And so that's why you see a higher spend in, uh, in July. Good point. Um, same story here. So uh, the inquiry to MQL uh, sentence has dropped from the beginning. Um, so we had some really good traction with the, with, the, with the webcast that we were running. But that said, in August, it was the only month uh, since April that we haven't had a webcast as well. So we're just uh, re recycling on-demand content. So that may be the reason along with the lower spend and the seasonality. Uh, this just shows uh, the stages uh, that the, the inquiries that are coming in and what stage they are. And there's a lot of um, leads and inquiry status. So that should be a good topic maybe to, to connect with the SDR team and, and check like how they're being followed up. Um, and then there is that initiative that we talked about at the beginning uh, for um, remarketing uh, with free trial, and that should move uh, some of them further down the MQL path. Just before we move on, oh. who's following up SDRs? Yes. Yeah, I, oh, this is not should, a surprise to me, by the way, but I'm just yeah. I would love to know, so we have closed that loop because my guess we will find is there's a follow-up question and there's what content they're putting in front of mm. the team's question like hey heard you like GitLab you want to talk you know dev and you're like I'm an ops person so it might be good to know what y'all find there was a so there was an SDR uh, sequence created as part of this campaign and that's what's utilized for follow-ups uh, but that said I uh, like because uh, for this particular campaign we we were not uh, the SDR team was not included from the beginning there was a gap there so it was not, um, someone was uh, aligned to this campaign at the very end. So they haven't got the buy-in, it was very rushed. So um, I need to check with whoever would be, uh, the people that created the sequences, um, how that is utilized, but there's a gap there. Um, I would say that uh, we haven't been 100% aligned on that front but I will follow up with them. One other question here. What is the double zero pre-opportunity on the linear, linear ops by stage? Uh, 
That number looks yeah. like that, that includes a very large number. My assumption would be when I looked at closed one, number 12, uh, with that being low, UBS is definitely not in that number. So my assumption mm -hmm. would be that somebody threw that in a double zero pre-opportunity. Do we know what that means? This goes back to the earlier question when mm -hmm. we were talking about ISCV, blah, 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 blah. Did it just get thrown into this particular stage and called it a day? Uh, the handbook page that describes the stages. I'll try mm -hmm. to link it. And if you click on the link on the top right, it, it drives you to the Sysons dashboard that uh, would break down those. Oh, uh, well, wait a minute. So this is only form fills. So maybe UBS did not do a form fill. Yes, it could be some, some, something else. So we can track back the UBS still and see what was that catch. Yeah, I think that's a, I, yeah, I need to understand that that delta from the, you know, what's showing in the size sense report and how mm. much of that was the UBS deal. Yeah. Maybe if we go back to the UBS deal on Salesforce, we can see as well, like what, what was that patch that was attributed to the GitOps campaign? Um, did which time? No. Um, so same story about August, there was, uh, it's the drop. Um, again, we had no new content this month. Um, and the lower graph just shows that the MQL to SAO, as we said, is, is, is dropping, but it's, it has been uh, best performing uh, for all the other, compared to all the other GitLab um, uh, use case campaigns. Um, and there is a goal to bring this further up. So, uh, that, uh, change of content, um, uh, bringing more content fresh, uh, would help with that. Just out of curiosity from what went on at commit and all the registrations and attendees that we had, are we mm -hmm. scraping the attendees to anything related to get ups and throwing them in this campaign? There is nothing uh, related to commit uh, with GitOps. Oh, wh how would you uh, like what what exactly? Well, there is lots of sessions around GitOps. I would take I those to say, attended that's sessions, actually really good idea. Uh, attended sessions, and throw them in this nurture campaign if they didn't mm. already MQL from commit. We also yeah. post I know that about those a, GitOps um, sessions. I know that there's a a um, like a, a list being developed as far as lead gen from commit. I'm not sure if it's broken down by that level of granularity mm. as far as topics. Um, I think, is it new doing that list? I yeah. forget who's doing that yeah. list. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if we have, uh, like, as Matt said, I don't know if we have that granularity of data to show what Oh, we sessions. do. Oh, we do? I guarantee okay. you, we do, for so sure. So then, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, we should see like what what nurture stream they've been added to and see if we can do it per use case like that would uh, But that said that the same person may have attended multiple sessions and maybe Correct. GitOps and CI and another session so There may be a specific nurture stream for commit or there may even not be an uh, uh, Energy stream. I'll co con connect with Newt to see like what the strategy is for follow-ups Great. And see, there's an, uh, an opportunity there. Um, okay, so we touched. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Niall, on the, I don't know if you're still online. Oh, yeah. Are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the, one of the issues you mentioned was the drop in traffic. So we did check the, to compare it to last year's traffic just to ensure it was seasonality. There was a, a similar drop. It's a little bit higher this year, but uh, we're factoring in for that, the fact that the pandemic and, and other issues for uh, business targeting changes for companies. So that could reflect the overall uh, drop for that, that area. Um, I think someone mentioned organic traffic within the report. Initially, it was requested for organic traffic, but then a request came through to change it to total page use for reflecting multiple form fields within the MQL line. Um, it's easy to incorporate if, if you want a separate slides incorporate moving forward with the organic traffic. That's no issue. That can be done also.
Um, so yeah, and we touched on the keywords already. So there is, we have got good traction on the keywords fairly quickly. Uh, one of the reasoning behind that might be because GitOps as a company um, kind of promotes content in around the same stream. So a lot of the related content to GitOps is something we have a lot of assets in already. So once we start promoting related contents to a specific term like GitOps, we can get good traction on it because uh, the relationship between the topic we're targeting and also the content we already have um, would be closely related and therefore give us a boosting fairly quickly, uh, which, which may be the reasoning behind why we're seeing such quick traction in such a short campaign, um, just for an overview on that. So we covered this. Hey, Niall, is there any um, insights around search queries organically that um, pop up as far as like outside of just the core term GitOps? Um, curious if there's anything I can glean from that for paid, paid search. Uh, do you mean as in not, not GitOps related, but related around the term GitOps itself, is it? Yeah, I'm curious if there's any other top funnel or mid funnel terms that we should be addressing in our paid search campaigns? Well, what we can do is we can do a query relation search on SEMrush and it'll give you a percentage rate between, so if you're looking at GitOps, it'll give you a list of keywords and then give you a percentage ratio relationship and then target the top ones within that. So they might be di directly related t terms, but topically from a search query perspective, they would somewhat overlap and that would give you maybe a bit of direction. Yeah, if we if you have some data around that, that'd be great. Because then I would like to align our paid search efforts around um, where we're seeing um, the interest as far as like organic search is concerned. Yeah, no problem. I can look into that. Thanks, Nell. Matt, you want to cover um, paid digital? Yeah, I want to be cognizant of time. Um, mm. Is this something we want to continue or do we want to... Um, schedule another time to go through this. I'm not sure what everybody's time schedule is if they're available for the next let's minutes. I would say let's schedule something else. Okay. It's super important. I think we need to get all of the information out and then I would say also um, I, I need to also get an understanding of how the segmentation is going to affect this particular campaign and then once we identify even that land or expand piece of it um, I think there's been assumptions already um, made that it's only an expand. Mm -hmm. um, we need to really understand the uh, segmentation because in my view, segmentation is actually not um, a huge part of this because it goes across all of them. I mean, essentially Terraform in and of itself is an open source. Uh, they don't have to pay for it. They can do GitOps with the open source um, Terraform and a paid for GitLab or even a potentially a non paid for, I don't know, William, you probably need at least premium, right? To be pure get ops. We need to, we need to figure out how we're going to move this to the next level. Yeah. Um, and then the only other thing too, when I see that rancher thing, Kristen, I don't see a hashtag get up. So how did that pop open as the top earned post? Um, because I'm able to manipulate the report to include other variations. And the reason why we do that is we like to remember that our audience um, for GitLab isn't probably always going to be like the most like social aware of how to use social or that type of thing. So um, I just make sure that we do all variations, including text, hashtags, and mentions, and also potentially incorrect mentions so that we're not missing anything. So that's why we're able to pull that in. Gotcha. Okay. So you pr likely you pulled that one off of infrastructure as code is my guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. I, yes. I would. Yes. I would. I would be keen to continue if if you can for ten minutes to go through the last slides for channel performance. Uh, we will keep recording this for anyone who needs to drop. But Tina, we should do that. We should bring that discussion to Dunk as well. So I would share the recording with him and maybe arrange something another meeting to go through whether it should be a land or expand. Yep. Uh, it's a, a different meeting. So. Excellent. Uh, Perfect. Uh, Thank can, you. Can people stay for 10 more minutes? I have to yeah. jump. I have okay. another meeting. Okay. Um, Matt, would you be able to stay for 10 minutes to cover the digital? Yeah, I mean, 
Or do you have another meeting? I I don't. I just would rather have a conversation around what we're doing as far as mm. the, the paid uh, a digital perspective. I don't want to really blast through these slides. Yeah, we can we, have. We covered it. We covered a ton yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a, so much to dig in here. So uh, really, this was like our first our first crack at the bat for this topic. So there's there's a lot to unpack. It's it might be good to just set set another session. Okay. Uh, well, then I can set another session for next week, same time, maybe a half hour to go through the rest of the stuff if you're up for it. The other thing I can do just on the paid search uh, or the, the paid digital stuff, I can just do a recording to go over just the high level detail and post that to the issue. And then maybe we can have an async um, conversation. I'll address some of the questions that um, Tina and um, Brandon brought up and how we're adjusting our paid digital strategy for, um, for this quarter and in relation mm -hmm. to GitOps. Um, and then maybe we handle it that way. And then uh, if we need, if we need to have like an, another discussion, we can. I would love to, to have a conversation about that <laughs> actually. So, uh, and there's more channels to cover the next slide. So there's Path Factory and Nurture as well that have some interesting insights there. So maybe, uh, we'll do another half hour ne ne next week if, if you're available. Um, yeah. uh, it's fine if you don't think we can do it async. Okay. Um, okay, I'll invite the same people and maybe add uh, Dank as well if we want to also discuss about the LAN expand. Um, connection with, with the GitOps campaign, because it sounds like it's a conversation that we need to have moving forward with this one. I wonder, uh, I wonder before we, sh before we uh, loop Duncan, if we should just get some uh, data that would, that would validate or invalidate our assumption mm -hmm. there. Um, and I just, we, we, we probably need to dig through Salesforce ops and just, I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure where, what would, what would be digging. So, so one, one thing I know, for example, is I've been working with Mahesh and Alita on competitive win loss analysis and, and they dig through like every single op on competitive and, and then they categorize it by CICD, DevSecOps or SCM. And I said, well, have you, have you categorized any of these via GitOps? And they're like, no. So my, my gut feel is that GitOps is we're not accounting for it just because it's new. It's like, mm. this is totally new. Um, so I don't know, I'll think about it. Does anybody have any thoughts on who might be like a point person or DRI to like dig through Salesforce and be like, yeah, these are actually some GitOps is a land campaign or, or no, it's not. Like clearly all the GitOps related stuff is all expand. I, I don't know how the initial, um, the initial decision was made, like what kind of data uh, they've seen uh, or who did it. That, that's a good point. Um, who made that call or how did you become aware of it? So it's part of the um, marketing plan, like for the, sec the second half of the year. And it's part of our demand, demand gen plan as well for Dunk's team. Um, but I don't know where it came from. Like, um, it was more of a, these are the campaigns that should be landed. and these are the ones that should be expand. That, my feeling then is maybe in the uh, marketing strategy and tactics meeting, mm -hmm. I'll, add a, I'll add a bullet point item. Um, I know Todd did an AMA on, on the whole deck. I was going to say, but, he does have the deck, but it probably would be helpful for a lot of folks to have him re-go over that. Yeah. Uh, Irini, if you know what slide that's on in the deck on the land versus expand, if you can slack me the slide number or, or yeah. link me to that slide, I'll add an item for the marketing strategy and tactics. And we can just ask, we can say like, hey, we did this campaign overview. We can link to this video. Yeah. And um, that'd be a, good. a good next step in my opinion. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. 
right, we did go 10 minutes <laughs> in the end. Uh, but if, if you prefer to do a video, like uh, it's okay by me, just uh, wanted to discuss like how to move forward, like next, next steps on like the uh, promoting the new assets and all that. Um, yeah, I just want to be cognizant of time and, mm. and putting in the meeting. So I, I just want to put it out there that I can do it async if we wanted to. Um, but if we feel like we need to have a synchronous meeting to do it, then we're more than happy to do that. Um, yeah, for, for, for me, like you, you, you can do a video if you, if you prefer, like we have, um, uh, we have try to do this meeting three times <laughs> uh, and it keeps um, being longer, but um, feel, feel free to look at the other channels as well. If you have any, question, any questions, um, please comment on the slides. Uh, but I think the, um, the paid digital is like a big chunk that's left that uh, we would need to talk about. So yeah, we can try with async and then uh, discuss from there. But, uh, and then let, 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 let's raise the land versus, versus expand on that marketing strategy call and uh, see if we need another meeting on that part of the discussion. Sounds good. It works. Well, thank you so much for joining and, and giving the insights and all the conversation. All right. Bye everyone. Bye.